If you like to eat, drink, and be merry, you're in the right place. Faith here with a welcome toast. It was Judith Olney who said, It seems to me that chocolate eaten early in the day does not tend to turn to fat as readily as does an evening's chocolate binge, but I might be wrong about this. Please feel free to consume this show podcast in small bites or eat the whole thing. I got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. It's great to have you joining the party on the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze, the place to eat, drink, and be merry. We're going to talk about our ice cream extravaganza, as we told you. We've got this boozy milkshake with bourbon, and you can make that at your next party. We're going to make ice cream without an ice cream machine, which is really exciting to me. I have a machine, but I never want to do it. We're going to do wild ice cream flavors, how to pair ice cream and pie. Hi, Arethusa Dairy Bar is here, and I'm going to tell you how to make a new favorite. This is a grilled cornbread bacon ice cream sandwich, plus my salad shrimp roll. I've teamed up with Chris Prosperi, and we think we've come up with a winner. So my treasured food buddies are here, senior contributors Chris Prosperi, Alex Province, and our special guest, Tony Urgaitis of Arethusa and Manolo Blahnik. Welcome to the show, everybody. Hey! hey. hey. It's good to have your ice cream extravaganza. Can't wait to do this. We're going to start with something that I think is the most fun, and it is the Boozy Chocolate Bourbon Milkshake. Oh. We have equipment in the room. <laughs> we up. are taking advice from Tony from Arethusa Dairy Bar, which is in New Haven and in Litchfield. So we've got their ice cream from Arethusa chocolate vanilla we have their chocolate milk we have oh. uh, their regular milk later the pistachio ice cream but for right now <laughs> we're going to make what's called a black and white this is a boozy bourbon chocolate shake and it's on our website at foodschmooze.org chris you're the man for this okay right. so i, I want direction though because uh, i'm not the best milkshake maker so. okay so tony and i are going to give that I'm to you so. to help Okay. Uh, yes, Alex, you are excellent. Well, he's got the booze, so we uh, definitely need him. And and I, I think I think that Robin Doy and Aiken and yeah. I are great tasters, and she's on the show oh, with us, right, uh, Robin? I can't okay. put down my spoon. Oh. Okay. So here's what I want, Chris. I want you to put in, and Tony, I want your input on this. We want the yeah. You're going to put their chocolate milk in, mm. okay? And Tony, what do you do? I would say right there. Right oh, okay. There? Like, so yes. this is what okay. they do in the shop. Right. But we're, right. I like we're that. doing our own version. We've got right. Maker's Mark I, bourbon I, here. I just eye it. Yeah, that now, looks good though, right? You ready? All right. Yeah. All right. I know a lot of cooks in the kitchen right now. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> let's do one generous scoop of vanilla. Generous. One? Oh. Generous? Oh, like half of that. It's half generous. That. Okay, half of it. Or half, half the container. Half, half really, the container. Half, half of the container. container. So we have half a more, pint. More. Half, so a half pint, of the Chris. container. Half the container. Half the container. Half the container. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. So think about That's this at home. That's a generous You want scoop. half a pint. A little more, a little more. A little more. All right. Okay, now hang on. Now we're ready for the chocolate. So we did a good splash of probably about four, six ounces of chocolate milk their milk chocolate milk oh, is so creamy and deadly oh, fabulous great, great. then we did um a vanilla ice cream about half a pint and now we're going with their chocolate that's why it's a that's black and white right half a container uh, right tony what let's do, do let's do half let's do half a container. we'll see we're gonna we're not eye using it. we never we never today. measure right, we never no measure. syrup we're you just... don't need syrup we have the chocolate milk oh, yeah. i think that's <laughs> gonna <laughs> add to it and of course now excellent this Chris. Chocolate now here we go this is all going we're gonna do one more scoop okay this thing is gonna run <laughs> this is like the most rocking, breezy <laughs> bourbon <laughs> chocolate right. shake of your life. All right, there we go. There All right, we go. Now, here comes Alex's opening. We've got Maker's Mark. We thought that would be a good bourbon for this. You could use your favorite bourbon, any bourbon that you've got will be just fine. So normally for a pint of ice cream, which is about what we've got in there, Tony, I would say four ounces of Maker's Mark or any bourbon that you like. So, Alex, that was oh. about two, that was about three, three and that's about oh. four. Okay, that's good. <laughs> just a dash. Whoa. More. Just a dash. More. Okay, that's just a dash. A dash no, that's for very the, nice. Right. Very nice. For dash for the uh, mixer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's I like a that. baker's <laughs> dozen. Oh, this is work. All right, here we go. Right. Chris, go for it. This is something for your party. Ha, ha, ha. 
That's a good sound. Woo-hoo. Now, see, if you make this in front of your guests, just as we are sitting here thrilled with our noses in the air, our tails wagging, that's, that's what's going to happen with your party guests. Okay, here we go. Glasses at the ready. Is it thick enough, Chris? It looks pretty thick. Oh. Is that thick enough if for not, you? We'll you put, can, if now, not, we'll put more ice cream in. Here, pass them around. Okay. Let's, but let's, I, okay. I, it looks good. It looks good. I like. I don't yeah. like it till you have to like chew it. I oh, like are we going to put a little mint? Oh, a little mint. Oh, here we go. A sprig of mint. A little sprig okay. of mint on each our one. Garden in Litchfield. Oh, is it from your it garden? Is, it is. Oh, that's nice. So, if you want your spoon, to table. if you want your spoon to stand up, you would add more ice cream because ours is a little bit thin. I think that bourbon thinned it out. Cheers. Oh, cheers. I like it like this. Here's her. May I tell you? Mm. This is spectacular. Oh my. This is on our website at foodschmooze.org. Mm. This is when I something say to serve, right? Yeah, I, I don't use that word very often. Spectacular. Oh my god. Oh my. It's the good chocolate a, ice cream. So, oh my. Tony, yeah. can, right. This is my style milkshake. Mm-hmm. It's like a frozen chocolate milk in a way. For people who want it thicker and want to eat it with a spoon, I want toasted walnuts sprinkled on the top of this so that when you eat it with a spoon you're getting that toasty walnut flavor with us what do you think well we have toasted almonds we've never Slivered tried almonds. the toasted mm. right so bourbon right. and walnuts in many pies mm. oh no yeah this would make a great cocktail we're gonna have to serve this at, at the, the bar, bar? At at the the bar. bar. <laughs> we're gonna have to uh, ask for ids <laughs> <laughs> i like that you need you need this is the food schmooze <laughs> boozy bourbon chocolate shake oh my you'll you have need, the yaleys in there you need another for sure <laughs> i think it's too good robin what do you sure. think that is so tasty <laughs> No, it's it's really, right? The bourbon is not overwhelming. It's just the right yeah. amount. The chocolate is beautiful. And it's the quality of their ice cream. Mm-hmm. But it's mm-hmm. also knowing how to mix. Yeah. You know, we just yeah. buy it. It yeah. is just yeah. the right amount. Yeah. I don't think you could have made this badly, though. I don't know. The best ice cream <laughs> in bourbon. Oh. I know. Oh, well, the so bourbon good. could have overpowered it. It could. When you would be going. It could. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking I don't even want any other dessert. When people go to their desserts at a restaurant, I'm going to order this wow, as a martini. Wow, that would dessert. Anyone who would like to put this food schmooze boozy bourbon milkshake on their wine list, please, please do. And who knows, you might find it at Arethusa. And we'd like to say that we also give credit to Chris Prosperi and Tony, your guide is from Arethusa for the creation of this recipe. I feel like we did this as a team, team effort. effort. Okay. The and, test kitchen. And, yeah. and, and <laughs> could I say that also you want to choose your favorite ice cream, but the quality of the Arethusa ice cream is terrific. Yeah. I love Farmer's Cow too. There are many, many ice creams everybody loves. We're going to get to those in a while. But your quality of your vanilla and your chocolate is just fabulous. So and that helped make this a wonderful drink. Okay, since we're doing this ice cream extravaganza on the show, let's get to all kinds of versions of ice cream sandwiches. Uh, Does anybody, do you make these at home? Robin, do you with the kids by any chance? Do oh, they? sure. Sure. What do you do? Cookies, of course. Stop and Shop has a super thin chocolate chip cookie. They're expensive, but they work very well for ice cream sandwiches. And um, remember, Alex did a waffle pizza. And mm. I'm a big believer in doing ice cream sandwiches with fresh, big, fluffy waffles. <gasps> oh, what a good idea. Oh, and cut them into like quarters. <gasps> oh, mm-hmm. my oh, goodness. I love idea. that mm-hmm. idea, Robin. All right. Well, we've got all kinds of ideas for you. I uh, in invented one so a uh, run for the hills there's brooks Heedley in the new york times we have this on our site we obviously had this thought at the same time chris alex and tony could you use regular bread could you use a baguette to do an ice cream sandwich how would you do that i go online and within a day of my thought <laughs> i love this brooks Heedley had been celebrated in the cooking column of the new york times for doing exactly that. So here's how it works with regular bread. Couple slices of white bread. He used Pepperidge Farm. I think he likes the texture of it, Tony. And then he smears the bread with butter, sears it in a cast iron or nonstick pan until the outside is caramelized and golden. These are the bread pieces. You allow it to cool for a couple of minutes 
and then you place the bread sear side down on your work surface. You scoop gelato or your favorite ice cream onto one slice of bread. You top it with the other slice, and then you take that whole sandwich and you slice it into four pieces. He drizzles it then with extra virgin olive oil and a light sprinkle of sea salt. You can freeze it in the um, freezer for an hour, or you can serve it right away. Well, moms, it's you're not for school lunches. You better, yeah, uh-huh. so <laughs> bread, bread and ice cream. <laughs> uh-huh. Not great. So um, that's on our website, foodschmooze.org. That sounds great. Yeah, Chris, what about you? You're gonna hate me for this one. All right, you ready? The good humor sandwich. You like oh, it? I love. I don't know. I grew up in New York, and every day at around five thirty, six o'clock. That truck used to come down our street. Just that childhood memory. Even though I love really good ice cream, when I go to an ice cream sandwich, and that was, I guess, when I was a kid, that was my thing, was the ice cream sandwich. And I don't think it's changed because we keep them in our freezer at work. You do? <laughs> and in the summer, we have them all every afternoon. Now, so so here's the <laughs> Cheesy, thing about but that. It's good. How Do you like it a little squishy, a yeah, little melted, let, oh, or yeah, do you like it no, rock hard? No, you got to let it, you got to leave them out for a little while. Do you and squeeze then, them so yeah, it comes then out you the side? Squeeze them out the sides. It's like Portion totally. control, you lick out the Come on. <laughs> Think about me, a kid in the 70s, running around the streets of New York with my ice cream sandwich. We're going to talk it. later on about some ice cream flavors <laughs> that, that are that the wildest. Back right? That's what you think of. You know what I think of? The Blue Bunny malt cup. That's, uh, that's one of yes, my that favorite from things. Ch- from that's, a kid? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, oh. from adult. The truck would go by my window, oh, okay. and I would go out with a $20 bill, yeah. get six of them, <laughs> and stick them in the freezer. The Blue man bunny. loved it. Oh. I, had, I had a truck stopping at my house personally. It's like, Playing this song for you. Yeah. Well, there's no kids there, but she really likes them. <laughs> we just had good humor trucks. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, in New York, I think every street had one, right? It we was still, amazing. In Hartford, we still have the ice cream truck that goes by every summer night. Every night. Really? Still? Right, right, still. Yeah. Yep. So in New York, there's a thing about whether you're allowed to play that sort of demented song <laughs> and that, that is in... <laughs> really, it's scary. It's like a doll that comes to life in the middle of the night. Yeah. And then there's the, um, there's the big gay ice cream truck, which serves fabulous ice cream. And But we're lucky here. This is one of those things like pizza. I think our ice cream competes with anything in New York. And I mm-hmm. would say... Uh, in the supermarket, Farmer's Cow, incredible. Talenti, incredible. Real thing, we're talking about, you know, Arethusa oh, Dairy Bars in New Haven creams, and yeah. Litchfield. So here's another way of making an ice cream sandwich. This is in Boston. It's Blackbird's Ice Cream Shop, and they make a donut sandwich. Ooh. So they take a donut that, you know, they'll get several donuts, slice them in half horizontally, mm-hmm. Put on whatever ice cream you want. It's six bucks at Blackbird, and it's in the south end of Boston. And it is a huge hit. People are in lines. They sell probably a hundred a day. Decadent, but yummy. Yeah, yeah. I've got one. So I love taking really good vanilla ice cream and putting it on a wooden board and then adding M&Ms and using my hands to sort of squish it together, get the incorporate the M&Ms. Now imagine taking uh, chocolate chip cookies but using M&Ms instead of chocolate chips, letting it cool and then making an M&M vanilla ice cream cookie, put it in the freezer, wrap it in. So you're, you're making M&M chocolate chip cookies. Mm-hmm. For then you're using those as the sandwich. You got it. Bread for the M and M ice cream. And I, for the M and M ice cream, just use really good vanilla ice cream in your hands to mix in the M and M's. And there's something about softening the ice cream to that texture. You can eat it right there, and you get to lick your hands. And then, and then in the freezer. It <laughs> and goes. then in the freezer, make them. You know. So hard. you make them first while the ice cream is soft. Sure. Make the cookies first and let them cool so you're not melting it. Have them off to the side and then make your ice cream and then put it all together and then wrap them so that they don't absorb odors in the freezer and chill them into their rock hard. Oh, 
That oh, sounds okay. good, doesn't See, it? See, it's, it's all about the bass. It's all, it's about, all, about, yeah, the it's all about the bass. <laughs> good ice cream. Now that song's in my head. Right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and then, you know, you use anything. I decided to give one of these a try, and this is what I call, and we have this on the website at foodschmooze.org. It's grilled cornbread. This is one of my favorite things, where you butter oh. cornbread on both sides. Mm-hmm. Grill it on both sides. This can be store-bought or homemade. Then you set those slices of corn bread aside until they cool down just like Alex's cookies and when they're cool and they're about a half inch thick if you have corn muffins you can just split them in half horizontally anyway they're crispy now and when they're cool you top each half with vanilla ice cream and then for me I sprinkle on very crispy bacon crumbs You don't have to do that. If you're a vegetarian, you could use toasted walnuts or toasted almonds, as Tony likes to do at Arethusa. And then you put the top back on, and you have a grilled cornbread ice cream sandwich with a little bit of bacon in there, if you like it, or some nuts. And it is really pretty fantastic, I have to say. So give it a try. It's just an unusual, very, very good thing. With that recipe, I love the vanilla ice cream, but I had this goat milk ice cream that had like a sourness to it. Yeah. That when I would you hear like that? that? Oh my gosh. It would just play off the... Uh, yeah, you know, good I, point, because you could use any kind of ice cream you want with the cornbread. There are people making fresh corn yeah, ice cream I've right now. Too. So, oh, that's a good but idea. if you're making your own cornbread for that thing, you might have fresh corn in your cornbread. You might have a little jalapeno in your cornbread. Whatever you put, you might put the bacon in the cornbread. Whatever you do with vanilla ice cream and cornbread, it is very, very good combination. I put a little sea salt. Yeah, that's ah, sea and there salt, you go. Right? We have. We're going to talk about Arethusa Dairy Bar and how they make their ice cream. We're going to taste their new flavor Oof. here on the Food Schmooze. Kind of a debut for this flavor. We're going to talk about wild ice cream flavors what to pair ice cream with the cookbook a la mode we're getting to all of that here on the show so let's take a break more mouth-watering conversation and fun ahead on the faith middleton food schmooze i hope you'll make a charitable contribution to feed the hungry those lines are longer than ever we're online now at foodschmooze.org and we'll be right back because you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that bass, about that bass. Because you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that Okay, hope that first bite of the food schmooze felt like a hot biscuit with butter coming your way. Feel free to tell your food-loving friends worldwide they can enjoy the show and our online site at foodschmooze.org. Here's your second bite. Cornbread said, now that's all right. Bean. Meet me on the corner tomorrow night. I'll be ready. I'll be ready tomorrow night. We have a free podcast for you, meaning you'll never miss a drop of pleasure. All you do is go to our site and you sign up and we will automatically send you the food schmooze every week so you can listen on your schedule, not just on our schedule. We're trying to make this as convenient for you as possible. And it's how a lot of us do it now. You can also, when you go there, discover our delicious curated food, wine, event, cocktail recommendations. We love talking 
talking with you. And by the way, we are on Facebook and we would like to begin a conversation right now. You are listening to the Ice Cream Spectacular on this Food Schmooze edition. And we would like to say, we want to know from you, where are you getting your favorite ice cream? No matter where you live in our broadcast area, we want to know about this. That's Faith Middleton Food Schmooze on Facebook. We're talking here on the show with Tony Urgaitis, who is from Arethusa Dairy Bars in New Haven and in Litchfield. I'm with Alex Province, who's a wine broker, lives in Hartford, Connecticut, senior contributor of the show. Other senior contributor is Chris Prosperi of Metro Beast Restaurant in Simsbury, Connecticut. Our senior producer is Robin Doyen Aiken. Mark Raymond will be back with us, and so will Anthony DeSario. Right now, to Tony... At Arethusa, where you make great ice cream, Thank I you. have to say. <laughs> Thank you. We are maybe the first show to premiere your pistachio ice cream. This is new at the Dairy Bar. I'm about to dig my right. spoon into pistachio. Tell all me right. how this is made and why well, you're proud of it. Well, what makes us different from all the other ice cream producers is we make our own mix. All the milk just comes from our cow. Oh my and God. I have to give uh, our plant manager, Chris Cassiello, credit for the ice cream. And th- this is a flavor. No, wait a minute. Hold on. Go ahead. <laughs> Did you make this batch just for us? Because that is possibly it's evil. the best pistachio <laughs> oh, ice it, cream it, I had incredible. ever had. It's incredible. We oh make our own paste. We bring in our own pistachios. And we start with the pistachios. And Chris... That's where the talent comes. Oh uh, flavors, I think, are so delicate, and he just knows how to combine it. This is how we started maybe yeah. three, four years ago, making ice creams. We'd have meetings, and we'd say, okay, Chris, we'd like to try coffee. And a week later, we, of course, we work in New York, we come back, oh, the coffee ice cream is <laughs> right on. And the same thing, strawberry. So we just kept on going. I'm yes. going to ask you a question about this because what happens is, I mean, there are some great commercial ice creams mm-hmm. out there. You know, I love graters. I love Talenti. You know, these are when you're in the supermarket, you just grab them out of the, I love Farmer's Cow. Okay, all good. But, you know, there's a thing with food costs when you make something. The supermarkets are going to charge a certain amount. The packager is going to charge a certain amount. To keep the quality what it is, is very, very difficult when you're in that world. I mean, how are you doing this? You know, it's a premium ice cream, but there are several comparable ice creams priced the same as our ice cream. When you look at packaging, too, you look at what they call the overage, and ours is truly, you know, it's not very much overage. Fresh, dense, good well, ingredients, the farm, incredible flavor. We're local. The farm is an hour away from here. Milk is brought in. A lot of good ice creams out there, they have to start by buying milk. You don't. <laughs> no, we, we know how. <laughs> right? We know. They we, just we, go out to the barn. The right, cows are know, out we, there. Like, the way we take care the of the cows, the way we <laughs> feed the cows yeah. is so important. Yeah. And it's such a good quality milk. All of this, what we're doing is to support the farm. So, not but, to yes. get too crazy about this, but there are people who believe that the lighting in the barn affects their lives and then that, their stress, and then that is reflected in the quality, the taste of the milk. Do you find that to be true well i think animal welfare is very important and the quality of light well we dim the lights if it's too bright oh, you know there are mattresses well. they, they go well. out every <laughs> they day they're really well you taken care of we this <laughs> contributes to that quality if you go to this farm and i have been to this farm it is like people are on their hands and knees with little scissors <laughs> cutting the grass i mean it is the cleanest dairy barn i have ever laid my eyes on it is just the most neat exquisite little thing it's amazing <laughs> neat and little with 400 cows yeah i was gonna say not, <laughs> not so little so but. in the springtime milk is very special right it can change a bit once they start out grazing you know that will they'll change flavors a bit but we're pretty consistent i was pretty gonna say consistent. i'd love to try vanilla ice cream from that milk from, when from they're the grazing spring, spring, that special you know, uh, that special up time. in the mountains <laughs> 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 with little Swiss maidens and yeah, their right, right. <laughs> Um So how is it you're so thin? 
with uh, all this ice you cream. You know, all of us in this room are so thin, and I think we all should take a walk after the show. Yeah, a, <laughs> he walked from his ice cream shop. We're, we're the street, having right? pistachio ice cream, milkshakes, yeah. you know, walk around the block. Yes, but I'm, I'm gonna you know, make just it. keeping busy. I'm going to make you happy because uh, we actually do have something savory <laughs> coming your way. It is a shrimp salad roll that I love to make, and I asked, I gave the recipe to Chris and said, would you make it for us? And we had it just before the show. So on our website right now at foodschmooze.org, we have a shrimp salad roll that I think competes against the lobster roll. And it is far less expensive, but it's really pretty delicious in flavor. So we're going to get to that in just a little bit. Let's all of us, because we're all into this ice cream world right now, and this is our ice cream extravaganza on the Food Schmooze. Let's talk for a second about the wild flavors that are out there in the world right now. Tony, your guide is from Arethusa. You must have to think about this. You know, what are you going to focus on in terms of flavors? Well, you know, you have to think about what the market will bear. And out there, we have people who want to try new things. They're very, very adventurous. So, of course, I've been online. We've done some of this before, but I want to do it again to see what's happening. And so I went, of course, to this uh, ice cream shop called Humphrey Slocum in San Francisco. This is the uh, hipster ice cream parlor there. These are some of the flavors. We have candy cap, black walnut, candied ginger, Elvis of the Fat Years, green tea, black sesame, a Guinness gingerbread. Now that does sound good to me. Harvey Milk and Honey Graham Cracker, Milk Chocolate Tarragon, Peanut Butter Curry. How does that sound to people? What mm. do you think about that one? Peanut Butter Curry? We, I can see that because we make a sauce for a chicken satay with peanut butter and curry. Do you drink it with beer? Yeah, uh, no, but I that, think it's I think a good that one. Would, yeah, I think that would work. Pumpkin Five Spice... Red Hot Banana, and that means Red Hot Candies and Banana Ice Cream, Uh. a salted licorice. Now, that's interesting because licorice requires something. I never know what it is, and maybe it is sea salt. There's a root beer. There's a white chocolate lavender. Saffron. Good one, Alex. Cucumber ice milk, Dirty Girl strawberry, golden beet saffron, hibiscus beet, red wine and Coke, pineapple five Uh. spice. Anyway, it's like that at Humphrey Slocum in San Francisco. What are they doing with ice cream? (laughs) Oh, I know. I'm a a purist. uh, Well, we're not that adventurous. We we want to perfect the classic flavors until we really perfect it. And that's what we're about. We're we're doing peach right now. And peach is a very delicate flavor. Mm. But wait till you taste that. that. You tasted the pistachio. Pistachio. So you perfect those Is the peach in here? No. Is the peach in here? No, 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 it's just down the street, though. We just <laughs> deliver the pizza. We need to walk, but, well, That's what we want to do. But when I go to a restaurant, I always want to taste the ice cream, no matter where I am. But then I could build around it. So all these things that you're mentioning, I could add, you know, this or that to it. There are other things that will catch my eye that I want to incorporate with the ice cream. But, you know, I'll mix it myself. We have Tony Irgaitis here from Arethusa. They also are the masters behind the Manolo Blahnik shoe empire. How are the shoes going? Oh, it's going well. Yeah, going it's well. still going oh, well. Oh, it's going well. We've been at it for 38 years. <laughs> but, you know, it's such a different business, uh, food business and shoe business. And, oh, it's two Does different it worlds. keep changing? It, everything keeps changing so fast. So we keep up with it. So because you're doing shoes and they're international, do you find there's a lot of talk about Brexit and the paperwork that people have to fill out? Imagine. to is it you know well we just came back from london that's where the uh, manolo blana headquarters are and um so they're not so much worried about it now things seem to be calm you know calm down huh we'll see okay we'll see. We'll i think see. it's going to be right now the pound is not as strong and there's going to be some growing pains yeah. it's going to be interesting but yeah. it's, it's so involved 
Oh, I know. Alex is holding up a picture of the latest Manolo Blahnik shoe. It's, like it's <laughs> hard not quick, to Alex. drool. <laughs> That's okay. about four inches. <laughs> um, we can walk with that around the, all the right. block. All right. So we there are, you go. We are going to get, Alex. let's see the loafers. Have we got any Ooh, loafers? That's a, that's a good, uh, the Here, swim it. <laughs> that's a good flat, he says. Okay, so I just want to announce this. I wish I could tell you that there were tickets available, but they aren't. This sold out almost instantly. And I have to say, I think this is a brilliant idea. It is the Museum of Ice Cream that has started in New York City. You know, our show is partly in New York City and in New York State for sure. I'm just crazy about this idea. I think that everybody should have a museum of ice cream featuring, just like Arethusa, our local ice cream producers. Wouldn't you go? Wouldn't you buy a ticket? That's why this sold out so quickly. And they tell the story of ice cream. This is in the Meatpacking District in New York City. Tickets are sold out, unfortunately. But I'm sure they will do this again. It's on for a month. Finally, a museum my kids might like to go to. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Remember the ice cream socials of the 40s and 20s, right? I mean, that was a big part of our country, right? Where people used to get together in neighborhoods and have these big block parties or whatever, right? And so, so what are you finding? What I find is that it's not necessarily under a canopy, under a tent at the fairgrounds. But if you, Erethus is an example of this, if you go to ice cream stands, these farm stands especially, and some ice cream shops, but especially the farm stands, there are lines of people, they're standing out in front of the shop, eating their ice cream, gathering together on hot summer nights. I've met amazing people sitting out in front of the shop in Bantam, and you just you just meet people from all over the country, sometimes all over the world, and you're like, oh, well, that's oh what I live I, down the street. That's Where what I love to see. You know, <laughs> it, it's, it, you know, it brings the community together. Yeah, and we have everyone you know, sitting outside. They're sitting there, and yeah. it, it's and really that, well. Who doesn't like ice about, cream? Yeah, exactly. And it brings, it, Everybody's it, smiling, <laughs> and, good and it brings mood, people together. You know? So it really does. If you're if you know that feeling of driving down the road, I was just recently I'm being treated for a concussion, so I've been driving to Middletown to see Dr. Karocha, who's this genius of concussion. And on the way, I go through Durham. Oh yes. And there is a dairy serve bar there, and the line around four or five o'clock at night is just goes for uh, I don't know how far. And I can hardly, I have to drive so carefully when I'm in that area because I think, what's happening in that place? You know, what are they doing? The boulders painted in black and white like dairy cows. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hey, so what if you want to make ice cream at home and you don't have an ice cream maker? I I looked up online. I thought, how do we do, does everybody have to buy an ice cream maker? I well, love. it turns out, no, you don't. We've got the recipe right on our website, foodschmooze.org. Go, Chris. I love the one that uh, a friend of mine in uh, in Litchfield County, Karen Duffy, has. It's a soccer ball. Yeah, you kick it around. And the kids kick it around until the ice cream is made. Yeah. You put your ice cream mix in the middle, and then you fill the outside of it with uh, ice, and then you just give it to the kids, and they kick brilliant. it around the yard. That's and that's wow. your... Right? Yeah. It's yeah. Right? <laughs> yes, you can have ice cream as soon as you make it. <laughs> Go play. <laughs> See, you could be running your shop that way <laughs> with just well, children kicking balls kicking around balls. the farm. Well, like our, <laughs> <laughs> we have now. I dare you to respond making, to that. Could they uh, make a thousand gallons a yeah. day? <laughs> I, don't, of I, don't, ice cream. I think that's a lot of kids. <laughs> Are you that's a that lot of kids. That's, that's the whole. That's the whole then town. There would be a child, the ball around. Be a child labor lawsuit. It would be terrible. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're going to take a break, and later on, just in a little bit, we're going to talk about the lobster salad roll. We're going to talk about the book A La Mode, which teaches you how to do pairings of ice cream and pie, those flavors together. What's the ultimate? All right. We love the local, as you can hear on this show. Please support your local food growers and food makers. You know our on-demand podcast of this show and the Food Schmooze Party every week. To see that and our curated recommendations, go to foodschmooze.org, and we'll be right back. Dispenser man, if you please, serve my chick a mess of calories. Banana split for my baby. Glass of plain water for me Flip back the lid, scoop anything in sight Make it a rainbow of red, brown, and white 
chocolate chip and everything that's nice. To the fruity one cents but only twice. Banana split for my baby. And a glass of plain water for me. Spray the whipped cream for at least an hour. We have one more mouth-watering bite of the food schmooze coming up. Here's something great to know about. Sign up for the app called NPR One. Just download it from the iPhone App Store or your Android device. And once you do, you can set WNPR as your local station. Couldn't be easier. Download the free app NPR One and start listening. Let's party on. More food schmooze. the food schmooze party offering the richness of life and coming to you in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New York, including Westchester County, the east end of Long Island, and of course the Hamptons. The senior producer is Robin Doyen Aiken, and to hear the show on WNPR, it airs Thursdays at 3 and Saturdays at noon. Podcasts and our curated recommendations, all of our recipes are always online at foodschmooze.org. On Facebook right now, we want to know where is your favorite summer ice cream? Just go to Faith Middleton Food Schmooze on Facebook and tell us. We're going to talk with you. Right now, uh, one of our favorites in terms of farm stands would be Arethusa Dairy Bar in Bantam and in New Haven now. And we have Tony Yurgaitis, who with George is a creator of that. One quick word, very fast, the base of ice cream starts it all. Chris, yeah, right? Yeah, starts it all. And a lot of ice cream places buy a mix. And it's just really? easier. Yeah, and then they'll flavor it with stuff. But, I mean, it's a little th- industrial. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little industrial. Yeah. And you taste, and that's why a lot of times you go to places and ice cream tastes the same. You that, make your own base, right, we Tony? We make it. We make it. That's where the chemistry comes. You yeah. really have to know how what you're doing. real What you're doing. So, as promised, if you go to our site, foodschmooze.org, we'll see how to do no-churn ice cream. You don't need a machine. You can do it in your freezer and condensed milk is the secret mm. foodschmooze.org very quickly my shrimp salad oh. roll which is <laughs> oh, i think it God. competes i think it competes with it's the lobster better. roll oh it's no, better it's not possible so chris we kind of cooked this up together you made this for us i asked you to do shrimp yep. cooked shrimp diced up it goes much further than lobster by mm. the way and it's a lot less expensive fresh corn kernels yep. coming off the cob yep. a little cayenne yep. Uh, salt and pepper, a little paprika, celery, some yeah. lime zest, yeah, diced lime. celery, diced red onion, yeah. either mayo, we used Hellman's, yeah. or you could use a uh, yogurt. And I made that for myself to taste yeah. it. Or a combination of the yeah. two on a buttered roll, New England split style, and then you stuff it in the roll, uh-huh. crumbled bacon on the top. The recipe is at foodschmooze.org. Yeah, okay. so good. It was because it was, it was so the vegetables it was, give it texture and, and freshness, the and, and the yeah. corn and the crunch of the celery. Yeah. It just breaks up the monotony of just lobster and mayonnaise. By the way, if you like it with a little bit more heat, then you add a little cayenne or extra cayenne. You make it your own. We give you the basic recipe and yeah. then have fun with it. Yeah. But the bacon, if you eat meat, is really, really great, Evan. fabulous on top. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. Good. Hey, want to turn your attention? to this book. It's called A La Mode. 120 recipes, 60 pairings. In other words, Bruce Weinstein and Mark Scarborough have done a book about how to combine ice cream flavors with pies and tarts and cakes and crisps. And all those flavors, how do you pair them together? We kind of stay inside the box, and they're trying to widen our vocabulary about this. And we have some recipes from this book. So I want you to join us in using your imagination to think about these combinations, whether you have the book or not. It's called A La Mode. And we have Mark Scarborough, who lives in Connecticut, with us. And Mark, Tony Urgaitis is on the show from Arethusa, and I bet you know know of each other's work. I do know of 
Tony's work. I know of Tony's restaurant. Yes, Tavolo. Hi, Mark. Tavolo. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Hi. Uh, okay, so Mark, on our site, we have your recommendation for a bacon maple walnut pie. Oh. First of all, that's just good by itself. <laughs> But, but you know, my mind goes to, oh, put vanilla ice cream on that. And you're trying to expand my thinking on this. What do you say to, to, to combine with this? Well, in the book, we do this bacon maple walnut pine. It seems like bacon is a theme going on on your show right now. But it's we, like we, forever. Perhaps. <laughs> we pair this with a malt frozen custard. So the malt made from malted grains gives that frozen custard extra body and turns it into that kind of malt chop old-fashioned favorite that matches perfectly with the bacon. And it's, it's a trick. The matching and pairing are actually tricks that you have to consider. And you're right. Most people reach for vanilla every time. Yeah, and because it's neutral and vanilla has a way of blending with so many things, and so we don't fault you for doing that, but we say you could try to think a little bit outside the box and you might be pleasantly surprised. And maybe you're not making your own ice cream. Maybe you're buying it off the store shelf. If, in fact, you are, Mark, bacon, maple, walnut (laughs) pie, what would you pair it with if you were doing store-bought ice cream? If I was doing a store-bought ice cream, I would get some kind of caramel ice cream, something that had Mm -hmm. a bit of depth to it. The way that we started thinking about this book early on was that, you know, flavors have high notes and low notes, high being, you know, sweet and sour and low being earthy and musky, you know, sour cherries versus mushrooms. When you hit one side of the scale, for example, if you hit those high notes in a dessert, you want to keep hitting them. Um, I think in the book we pair a plum cobbler with orange sherbet because everything has got those nice, bright, high notes. In this case, a bacon, walnut, maple pie has got all those earthy tones underneath it. It's kind of got bottom notes running under all the flavors. And so you want to pick something that matches that, that complements that. So I would go with some kind of caramel ice cream that's got a rich, buttery, slightly bitter finish. I have a question about this. In the wine and food world, as you know, sometimes we go with matching, just as you did now, high and high or low and low. And sometimes in the wine world, we go with the opposite, where if we're having a spicy food, we don't go earthy with the wine. We go toward the more floral, maybe even a little sweet. So we're contrasting. Is that ever true in your world with pie and ice cream? It is sometimes true. But we find the problem with the contrast is that cream itself is so overwhelming. It has such a mouth drenching quality about it that sometimes the contrast can almost get jarring. Like if you put, just imagine, this is not in the book, but just imagine putting lemon sorbet with apple pie. It kind of has a jarring note to it because that sorbet has got such high notes or even worse, lemon ice cream because the cream would just carry those high notes really fast right onto the palate. So cream is the napalm in the formula here that has to kind of force us to try to do a lot of matching rather than contrasting in ice cream flavors. Dark chocolate goes great with earthy flavors. So, uh, by the way, I wanted to say that uh, we have the recipe for the bacon maple walnut pie on our website, along with how to make, if you have an ice cream maker, malt frozen custard to pair that together. And it's from the book, a la mode, co-author Mark Scarborough, who lives in Connecticut, is on the phone with us. Tony, do you identify with what Mark is saying about the pairings of flavors when you're making your ice creams at Arethusa Dairy Bar? Well, right now we're using whatever is fresh. Right now it's peach. We just did this great tart. It's very compatible because we're using peach ice cream with a peach brioche tart. Our pastry chef gets a little more adventurous. But as far as the ice creams go, we are working with seasonal flavors as much as we can. I'm just curious to see how this overlaps. Okay, so Mark, tell me about your next recipe also on our site. Sour cherry cobbler, which is just great all by itself, but with a cannoli cream ice cream. (laughs) Because, you know, everybody wants to, well, I have always wanted to shove sour cherries into cannolis when I eat them. Because that (laughs) fabulous tart 
taste of those sour cherries mixed with that mascarpone, luscious, thick filling kind of brought us to the, the idea of this recipe of mixing a sour cherry cobbler with a fairly easy light topping with just almonds in it, no overwhelming hazelnuts or walnuts, and then pairing that with this uh, ice cream that is basically ricotta and mascarpone cheese and whole milk. Am I mistaken? We were just talking about doing contrast. Isn't this recipe a contrast where you've got sour cherry against the very rich, fat-like cannoli cream ice cream? I think it, it is a bit of a contrast. However, I think that ricotta and mascarpone have nice sour notes in them. And so they've got that nice pairing that pick it up. Now, of course, the sugar is going to mitigate everything. But in some ways, they've got these lovely high notes that match up with those cherries. Spread some mascarpone cheese on a bagel like I like to do. Mm. You know, it's got that slightly sour flavor to it that's just so irresistible. Mm. Okay, Mark Scarborough, co-author with Bruce Weinstein of A La Mode, 120 recipes, 60 pairings of ice creams that you make with an ice cream machine, plus pies, tarts, cakes, crisps, and more. You top them with ice cream, gelato, frozen custard, and many other versions. So they're trying to get you to think outside the box and combine flavors so that they really work together. And we're focusing right now on three recipes. They've been so generous to us, allowed us to put three of our favorite recipes on our site, foodschmooze.org. And that includes this one, big, soft vanilla bean cookies with chocolate peanut butter sorbet, not ice cream, sorbet. I love this. This is an ice cream sandwich. Uh, it is kind of a crazy ice cream sandwich, right? Because yeah. You this, this peanut butter chocolate mixture. And, you know, just those big bake shop soft vanilla cookies. And you pair them together and make ice cream sandwiches. And you know, I have to tell you that I have a lot of nieces and nephews that are coming in and out of our house this summer. And I always have some of these wrapped up in the freezer ready to go. Oh, they must just be in heaven <laughs> coming here. This is uh, except for the ones who want, you know, store bought ice cream sandwiches and <laughs> turned out like us, like them. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is like um, some of my some of my uh, my friends who have kids who take them to the fancy pizza parlor in New York City and get very fancy, you know, and the kids won't even touch it, and they want to go to the place on the corner that's a dollar a slice, you know. And the, <laughs> so it's just like that. Um, so how about you folks in the room? Do you find that you want, I want the cookie on the outside of my ice cream sandwich to be crispy, not soft and mushy. Tony, are you No, I, I agree. It's just that old-fashioned cookie that brings back all these memories. I mean, there are not many of us who think that way. I don't think there are. I think oh, a lot of people oh, like the soft, well, squishy cookie. Soft oh. is good because it doesn't hurt your See? mouth. Yeah. I mean, so I'm it doesn't, soft, uh, it doesn't yeah, hurt soft. your mouth. I'm a soft. Because I like a little, bite of it doesn't scratch uh, it. I like a little bite, this but I like cookie is the, abusing uh, me. Yeah, it scratches like a, your path, the top <laughs> of your mouth. <laughs> So I'm eating too fast. Yeah, I'm, so, the, I'm, I, I'm guilty of liking the cheesy one, you know, like this, Mark's the niece. mushy one. <laughs> yeah. well, so Mark, the, try to, the mushy one from Mark, the you're, you're store. like, well, you're that like, ice cream's going to soften yeah. that cookie. I know, very fast. I know. Unless you serve it right away, as yeah. you do with my crispy cornbread, yeah. <laughs> you just serve it right away, and then you're all set. So you Mark, know, you, you're uh, you're good with the squishy. I'm good with the squishy. You know, I have to tell you, too, though, if you want to make the easiest ice cream sandwiches in the world, you just, <laughs> dare I say, buy those soft, squishy cookies and then buy a pint of ice cream. Turn it on its side. Use a serrated knife and cut go. it into wedges. I like it. Yeah. yeah and then just right. put them on yeah. those cookies. You know, yeah. you just cut right through right. the carton and then peel the carton off. Yeah. And then put it on those cookies. And Mark's right. You can buy those at any grocery store. <laughs> yep. So can you tell me, when I was growing up, I had frozen custard from a stand in Hebron, Connecticut. And yeah. it was unbelievable. And I have searched for the rest of my adult life to find it again, and I never can. What is the secret to frozen custard? I wonder why people don't make this anymore. I know you've got a recipe for it here in your book. Yep. I think that the true secrets to these things 
in this book, we decided to get incredibly wonky. And um, we decided this, I guess, because we could. And a lot of ice cream custard recipes, when you make the custard yourself, they say to cook it until it coats the back of a wooden spoon. Well, honestly, my coating and your coating, we might have completely different ideas of what coating the back of a wooden spoon means. I mean, yes, you're supposed to drag your finger through it, look at the line, and does the line move? But you know what? (laughs) There's a much easier way to figure this out. You just take, as we discovered and talk about endlessly in the book, you just take an instant read meat thermometer, you clean all the pork or beef off of it, you take an instant read meat thermometer, and you cook the custard till it's 170. 170 is just below the coagulation point of eggs when they're in the presence of sugar and other thickeners. 176 is about the coagulation point. So you want that custard as close as you can get to almost scrambled eggs without getting there, and 170 is the number. So honestly, if you're making custards like frozen custards at home, get out that instant read meat thermometer. Lots of eggs in that, and that's what makes it so Mm, delicious. Lots of eggs. Thank you, Mark Scarborough, who with Bruce Weinstein has done this book, A La Mode, in paperback, how to pair all these tarts and pies and everything with ice cream flavors. It is really interesting. And also, Tony Urgaitis, who is co-producer of Arethusa Dairy Bars in Bantam, Connecticut, and in New Haven, Connecticut now. They have the restaurant Tavola and Bantam. Thank you so much for being on the show. And to Alex and Chris also. On Facebook, tell us where is your favorite ice cream parlor? We want to know. Or your farm stand, Faith Middleton Food Schmooze. We're on WNPR Thursdays at 3, Saturdays at noon, weekdays. Listen for my 60-second food schmoozes. Never eat more than you can lift. In New Haven, I'm Faith Middleton. This is the place to enjoy the richness of life. Sharing our local and national discoveries with you makes me want to get up in the morning. The gang and I hope you'll come back soon and often.